Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. Brought to you by GlanviaConnect.com. Hello and welcome to Farm View. Well, as usual, it's Kieran O'Connor here with your weekly farming programme. And once again, I have a very busy show for you this week. Well, on this week's programme, I discuss the experience and indeed the success of switching to solar power on farm with dairy farmer Michael Dorn. We'll also pay tribute to former Warford IFA chairman and Glanvia vice chairman John Fitzgerald of Roskill Meaden, who sadly passed away earlier this week. And plus, I look ahead to the reopening this weekend of the Ardmore Open Farm. And I'll also welcome back our farming calendar. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With GlanviaConnect.com, Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more. Well, one area of huge interest when we spoke about the environment and indeed the whole area of climate change over the last couple of weeks on the programme is solar energy. And one man who's very much got involved in that is South Wexford Farmer from Kilmore Quay, Michael Dorn, who installed solar panels at the end of last year and he joins us on the line. Michael, thanks for taking our call. Thanks, Sharon. Michael, solar power, solar energy, you got involved last autumn. You might give the background to how you got involved and why you got involved. I suppose for me it's part of the jigsaw and it's one piece in the puzzle from the environmental challenges that we're facing. But if I go back 10 years ago when I was livestock chairman in IFA and I had the opportunity to travel a lot of Europe, a lot of farms I went to at that stage were generating solar electricity on their farms and they were very proud of it. Um, They would have had it on their sheds uh, there would have been some community projects where they would actually identify a farm that had a suitable shed and it was something that they were doing at that stage like and I always it, it opened an interest for me in it and just the potential that was there we were always told that Ireland doesn't get enough sunshine to be able to justify it um, but I suppose the technology has improved so much when farm gen started to promote it first it reopened that uh, idea at the back of my own mind um, and I started to look into it a little bit more and I suppose with a lot of these things, there's so many different companies selling products and, you know, we embraced some of these things over the years previously, but the company went out of business after a few years or it wasn't possible to get back up. So I suppose FarmGen, the fact that Lambia were behind it as well, gave me the confidence that, well, if something goes wrong, well, you'll have to step in and resolve it um, down the line, like, you know. So it gave me the, the security of knowing that, There'll be someone in 5, 10, 15 years that I'll be able to contact to resolve the issue if there is an issue, and please God, there won't be. And did you visit other farms, or were you going on uh, what you read up about and what you were informed about from advisors and whoever? I suppose it was more just what I was uh, looking at myself. We're here in the southeast. We get a lot of sunshine. Um, Metairn identifies it as the sunniest part of Ireland. You know, so the potential is there. But I suppose it was more just helping us as farmers to defend our situation. There's, there's, and farmers get a lot of bad publicity at the moment. And it's about trying to help defend ourselves and say, well, these are the things I'm doing on my farm to help the environment. Whether it's applying slurry by less technology, whether it's incorporating clover to reduce my nitrogen use. And the solar panels on the roof of the shed is actually, you know, another part of that equation for me to be able to say, well, look, at, I have the solar panels on the roof of the shed. I'm generating some of my own electricity. I'm reducing the carbon right. that I'm importing onto the farm. So you had the idea, you 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 read up on it, you were well informed. Last year then, when you got involved, I think it was last October, you got involved in two lots basically. But first of all, the milking parlour, you might outline uh, getting that installed and how difficult was it and as regards the funding of all that. It was actually a very simple process. Um, Damien Sutton from FarmGen visited the farm. Um, I had initially made an inquiry through FarmGen um, that I expressed an interest and I'd like someone to call and talk through it. So Damien came last August or September to the farm. Um, Due to COVID, there was a a delay in that. Um, They weren't allowed to get out and visit farms. So he called to visit the farm. He looked at the sheds and lighting of it and, you know, talked through what I wanted from the package and what options were available and um, the different sizes that we could go with. So we talked through it. And the one thing that I didn't mention was it, as a sole trader, it's 100% write off against tax in, in a given year. Oh, I wasn't aware so of that, that myself. Was yes, incentive yeah. that was there at the time for me to to actually do it because I am moving the business into a company. So, you know, there was, there was that benefit was there prior to moving into a company. So actually in the installation and, and the work involved, was it a case of handing over to Farm Jane or what was involved there as regards the installation of the panels and initially on, on your parlour? So the only thing I had to actually physically do was there was a couple of skylights on the roof that had to be covered. Um, you have two options, you either cover the skylight over or you put safety bars underneath the skylights on the roof of the shed. So the easiest option for me was to actually cover over the skylight because we actually wanted to maximise the amount of area that we could actually put 
panels on the roof of the shed. Mm. And look at in time to come, maybe if there's a rebate on when smart meters are installed, I might actually look at putting more panels on the roof of the shed to actually generate more. You know, the potential is there. Okay. But for the moment, we put 21 panels in. Um, I covered over the skylight. Farm Gen arrived on the farm and they took over and done everything from there. And then as regards the literally the mechanics of it, of the technicality of, of getting it all switched up, how difficult was that transformation to work from your panels and to get that up literally up and running? So basically two teams arrived from Farm Gen, an electrical team and a fitter. Uh, the fitters were up on the roof fitting the solar panels and the electrical team connected everything into my main fuse board in the milk and parlour that I needed to actually convert it, uh, the, the power that was generated by the panels right. into electricity that could actually feed in and to, to, to my fuse board. So right. it, it was very simple. Um, they put also monitors on the various different um, areas of high usage on the farms. So that was the milk and parlor, the milk and machine, the vacuum pumps, like the milk cooling. Uh, and I also have an irrigating system for mm-hmm. soil water uh, so just so we could actually monitor what all those different things would okay. actually usage be and to see then where the solar power and solar generation would fit into it. Now of course since then you've also installed it but you, you said before we come here in the farm in the whole house area as regards we're in now what coming into the month of May this weekend how well has it worked so far and what type of savings are there and how long will it take you as regards payback or what's your uh, plan as regards the whole efficiency of this solar panel system so i suppose there was two elements for me one was the environment credentials of it and actually be seen to be doing something to actually help the situation hand in hand with that was the actual financial benefit of reduced electricity usage on the farm so if i take last week as an example I used 1,051 kilowatts in my milking parlour. And that was with wells and various different parts, pumping water that goes with it. And of that 278, was, or a quarter of it was actually generated by the solar panels. Mm. So when we done the calculations on day one, there was a four and a half year payback right. on the initial investment. When I factor in the, the tax write-off that I got uh, initially putting it in, there's TAMS funding available on it as well for people that have space available to apply for TAMS. Um, we've done that as well. On, on and attractive grants, of course, as well, isn't there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Michael, as regards, a lot of people, and myself included, felt that when you had solar panels and solar by its nature means sunshine and, and light. Once you have a fine day at all, once you have daylight, it helps. But I'm sure a week like last week or 10 days that we had plenty of sunlight. Did that show a big improvement with the generation of electricity? Yes. On an overcast, we have an overcast day here today as we're recording. No sign of sun whatsoever. A few drops of rain um, falling. It's not actually raining, but there's just Welcome drops rain, I'm sure. Uh, we'll be very welcome if mm-hmm. it do come, but mm-hmm. uh, fingers crossed. Yes. But we've produced 10% of our usage today from solar panels. So there's seven, seven kilowatts almost produced so far. Um, it's 12 o'clock in the day here. But now. on the sunny day last week, obviously the figures have been a lot higher. Yes, yes. Uh, it was 25% last week. Yeah, yeah. So, so on real just... sunny days, you're getting up to 25%. Uh, on overcast days, we seem to be getting 10%. Mm-hmm. But it really matches in on a on a dairy farm from this time of the year on. You know, the sun and the daylight uh, is coming up after that morning milking, so it's helping to cool the milk. Um, and it yes. keeps the milk cool during the day. If there's any surplus, it's actually heating hot water for me. Um, there's an automatic changeover switch when there's a surplus not being used. It'll heat the hot water, so it'll have hot water for the mm. evening milking. And then it's there available for cooling the milk in the evening milking and, and, and during milking as well, like you know. So it, it does slot in very well. The second set put on then is provide uh, coverage to the rest of the farmyard and the workshop and the dwelling house. So, you know, it, it, it's given a similar um, benefit as well nice. during the day and during sunny days. So, you know, I see it as a win-win for farmers. It takes up no space. It's on the roof of your shed. And I think it's an investment. It's an investment I'm proud of be able to say, well, this is something that I'm doing to help on our environmental mm-hmm. credentials. And God knows we have enough challenges facing us on that at the moment and I think we as farmers need to, to embrace some of these technologies and be proud of it and not be afraid to show it off. Well Michael I, I think uh, there's a very positive story there from your end with Farm Gen and the whole area of solar power and solar panels you installed last October, you're up and running, you milk over 200 cows down there in Kilmore Quay and literally so far so good and as you say a huge environmental benefit along with a whole commercial benefit long term as well. Michael Dorn, Kilmore Quay, dairy farmer and Lambie supplier. Michael as always thanks for taking are called. Interesting to hear how well it has gone. I look forward to the day I can go down and visit your farm to see at first hand the, um, the panels.
on your farm, both in the parlour, farm yard and the house area. Michael Doran, listen, thanks for taking our call and best of luck for the future. Busy time ahead for you over the next few weeks, but thanks for taking time out to talk to me. Thanks very much, Kieran. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With GlambiaConnect.com. Thousands of products in the palm of your hand. And you're welcome back to part two of Farm View. Now, let's have a look at our farming calendar. Great to see our farming calendar back up and running again. Livestock Marks, of course, they continue weekly online this Saturday morning. Warford Ross Mart in New Ross. Cattle sales from half nine, calf sales from ten. Monday, of course, is Dungarvan Marks. Cattle sales every Monday from 11 o'clock. And don't forget that their calf sales continue. Their very successful calf sales continue every Thursday from 12 noon. All sales now live online at livestocklive.com. Turning to our farmer markets, country markets this Saturday, Warford Farmers Market, John Robert Square, as well, of course, on Saturday mornings, we have the Strabley Farmers Market now trading outdoors every Saturday morning, 10 till half 12. Thursday, Dungarvan Farmers Market, Grattan Square, trading from 9 until 2. While on Friday, Dungarvan Country Markets have reopened every Friday at the Scouts Den and Abbey Side from 9 until 1. While good news from Warford Farmers Market, Chris Hillard was on to tell us that Warford Farmers Market in St. Olaf's Hall will reopen on Friday next, 9th of May, again from 9 until 1. And a note in from Jerome Foley to tell us that Shannick Hill House Equestrian Centre will they return to action on Bank Holiday Monday next when show jumping for ponies under strict COVID protocols. All heights catered for and also, of course, their riding school has resumed as well. So Monday's action kicks off in Shannick Hill House at 11 o'clock on Monday morning. For more information, Shannick Hill House Stud at Gmail. Dot com. While Warford Mocker want to tell us that their very first of their weekly walks in the county will take place on Wednesday next at when Kilmac Mocker will host their walk at Crockwood from half past seven on Wednesday next with just a max of 15 allowed. For more information and need to book, look up the Warford Mocker social media page. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With GlanbiaConnect.com, Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more. Well, earlier this week, with we the very sad news with the passing of John Fitzgerald. Ross Kilmeaden only in his mid 60s he was taken so early from us but a man who packed so much into his 65 years particularly on the agri front in the region and indeed beyond well to pay tribute to him we're joined by a good colleague of John's and indeed good friend of John's and former IFA county chairman Michael Keane of Kilmac Thomas Michael welcome to our programme on this very sad week for everyone involved in the industry and of course for the Fitzgerald family in Kilmeaden Thanks Kieran and when I got the news um, yesterday morning it was very sad to me because I had worked with John I'm the chairman the Warford Farm Relief and John was my secretary and the last number of years we worked, worked so closely together but even before all that like John actually went to school in Kilmac Thomas in primary school he was a few years ahead of me and then he went off to Water Park and, and that's where he got his love of rugby and I gather he not know much about rugby yourself would know a lot more but he was a very accomplished rugby player Correct and of course as I said in the intro he packed so much in because he got very obviously a very efficient and excellent dairy farmer but on top of that he got very involved in the co-op politics with the local committee and then onto the board and he'd become vice chairman later on which we can discuss and of course the IFA as well but he was a great community man of course in latter years very involved with the Ballyduff G8 club where he was a proud chairman for years particularly the year they got to the senior final so he packed a lot into those 65 years Oh d- unbelievable the amount of work that John did and I suppose maybe you should go back and start Ballyduff Mokra and I, and I gather it was Margaret Lee here or maybe Margaret Kennedy back then she brought, got him involved in Mokra and he was a very accomplished quiz uh, contest as well and, and did very well at that and then as you said he got in, into first war for co-op and then it, when the amalgamation happened and, and John was very to the front in that amalgamation he didn't agree with it at the time he thought it wasn't a great deal but but when it happened, John was a principal man, a team player. He was on board and he rose to the rank of vice chairman of Glambia, which was a, a massive achievement for him coming out of Kilmeade. But like, and what he did, and you mentioned Bally Duff, the GA I passed down there most days. And I believe he's current chairman of Bally Duff GA. And I see the development that's going on there the last number of years. Then he was county chairman of ISA between 2014 and 2018. As everyone well knows this stage there was a lot of turmoil within that organisation back then. But John was a very steady and influence. Like he was just an unbelievable guy, mm. and a solid man. And when you mention on the, on the home farm, the dairy farm, I got up the EBI came out for 10 or 12 years ago. He had a cow in the top 10 or maybe at the top of the EBI. So he was a, a very good dairy farmer as well and greyhound. Mm. That was his passion. I, I used to hear him, I'd be talking to him. I mean, on a Saturday evening, he could take off at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock and drive to Shelbourne. He'd have a dog running there. Yeah, That's of course. the type of guy he was. Like, Ex- because you hear of a lot of good men out there. They do a lot of work outside the farm gate, but John did it in, in, inside and outside it. Yeah, inside and outside. And everything, he, everything he did, he did well. But he had a great way with him with people to bring people along. He could see both sides of every argument, both from the, as you mentioned, the IFA and farmer politics and 
and lead into the whole co-op structure. A very balanced but a very talented guy and a great family man and indeed of course to Nano and the family our deepest sympathies because for them in particular and particularly the last year and a half which has been difficult for him and particularly the family to see John in such discomfort but he, he, he bore that so well and it was testament to the man anytime I spoke to him on the phone he was always positive in a time where he, 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 it really was very difficult and he's love of rugby and Warford hurling and so thrilled to see Caelan Lyons doing so well and indeed the farming element so um, he had a great attitude to life and it's so sad he was taken so young from us Oh de- definitely here and it's only about three weeks ago I was talking to him on the phone one day and I said we hadn't had a farm relief meeting with a while I said we'll organise it with Ned Dunphy our, our, our CEO uh, a Zoom meeting and he was looking forward to that sadly John got unwell there about three weeks ago and, and that wasn't able to happen but like as I said he packed so much into his those 65 mm-hmm. years and like I have to deeply sympathise with Nano his, his daughter Amora and um, Joanne. Joanne and his son Gerard and, and also his grandchildren you know yeah. they've, they've really lost a true gentleman and a great guy and Michael my lasting memories of him are at the book launch in Kilmeade and he was so delighted so proud that this had come to fruition and indeed there was such a real celebratory day in Kilmeade that day and then on the retirement night for Pat Cody his milk advisor who was such a there was such a partnership together there and he was the real instigator in organising that night and was so thrilled again that night went so well so he had a big heart in every way in and outside the farm Oh without a shadow of doubt and I'd say if you even talk to spoke to our former Plan B boss uh, John Maloney because uh, that guy he, he, John had massive respect for him and because he was able to see the business side of things but he also was able to defend the farmer's interests out there as well mm. you know he, he was just an unbelievably talented uh, individual and it's a sad day that he's gone but right. look, may he rest in peace yeah. Michael Keane of Kilmac Thomas listen thanks for that tribute to the great John Fitzgerald of Ross Kilmead and once again to Nano Maura, Joanne and Gerard we send our, our deepest sympathies at this sad time but uh, Man might be gone, but definitely he won't be forgotten. John Fitzgerald, Ross Kilmeaden, may he rest in peace. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kieran. Well, earlier this week, we had some great news with the opening of some sports facilities right across the country. Tennis, golf, and of course, children allowed back in pods of five. But one very exciting announcement, of course, this weekend is the reopening of Open Farms. And one of those farms, of course, here in our county, the renowned Ardmore Open Farm. So earlier in the week, I got a chance to talk to the woman herself, Bridget Cobra. Bridget, opening this weekend, what a relief. Delighted, Kieran. Yeah, look, we've been closed now since just before Christmas, the 23rd of December, we closed our doors. So we've been closed over four or four and a half months. Um, obviously, delighted. Look, the, the animals are happy to, right. uh, they can't tell us, but they will be happy to see people back again. Bridget, what people don't realise, just before we came in here, we mentioned the fact you were closed, but those, all those animals had to be looked after. You had no income and yet you had all the running costs. Yeah, and probably the most expensive time of the year too through the winter. So like we've two full time zookeepers out there, and um, so they are they were kept on last year and this right. year. So it's our second time being closed within eighteen months. But Bridget, it's been busy behind the scenes. You have some new animals there, and of course new extra pods, which we'll talk about in a minute. But as regards the new animals, you you have all the existing fabulous range of animals you have, but you have some new uh, yeah, existing and uh, new um, animals coming on board. Got three male oryx arrived, so you may have seen them in photo before. And Can you say, Ari, can I explain to our listeners what do they look like? Uh, it's a, an animal, I suppose, uh, size maybe of a small pony and they're very long horns. Okay. Um, you'd see them, they're, they're, they're lovely animals now, so they're just settling in at the moment and then hopefully for the June weekend we'll have tapirs. Mm. So they're a large animal with, as we say, a big long nose yes. and they do swimming and that, so they'll be hopefully here by the June weekend. And of course for kids, you have the full array from very small kids. You have the petting corner, the baby rabbits and squirrels right up to the large animals. Uh, as regards the uh, mix of people coming on board, what changes will you have to make? Or you're opening this Saturday after a long, as you say, after four months, but what changes will people see? Of course, you opened last year during COVID as well. Yeah, we opened last year and we opened for Christmas. Um, so the main change is the indoor play centre has to stay closed and our restaurant, which would be a main source of income, has to stay closed also. So that's a big Could you hit. Do a take-away we can do takeaway coffee? Yeah, yeah, we will do takeaway yeah. food and drinks, okay. you know, so to give people that option. But like that is is a right. major source of income. So you've got all COVID restaurant. protocols in place like yep. you had last summer, which worked very successfully for you. So you're opening this weekend as regards people who want to book? Yeah, so it's online, ardmoreopenfarm.ie. So we're trying to do it all online right. if we can at all. Um, so you book your slot and you have three hours right. um, at the farm. So look, all the playgrounds, obstacle courses, 
everything there is open. Super. And of course, you're open weekends at the moment. And as you said uh, earlier, that uh, once which weekend comes, June weekend, you're going to be open full time. Yeah, we'll go back to seven days then just so this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. And from the following week, then the 7th of May, we go to okay. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So look up Ardmore Open Farms. Yeah. Bridget, we mentioned it in passing there about the pods. They've been a fabulous success. And now it's staycation. You have six. You have an extra three coming on stream. That's been a great initiative for you on the farm and a great extra source of income. Yeah, I oh, can't get over the, the response this year. The six original pods we have now are almost fully booked out for when we can open. Again, uncertainty with dates there. Um, and we have three new pods coming. Hopefully they'll arrive next week in from the UK. Yeah. So they're going to sleep up to seven to eight people. Mm. And the main, I suppose, advantage of these, they'll have their own showers and TVs in right. them. So you needn't even go into communal areas if you were a bit worried about so, the whole COVID. Right. Um, but uh, we do social distancing in there mm. as well, you know, limiting families. And so that. well done. You deserve great credit yourself, your family. Your dad was an award-winning dairy farmer back in the day. And now you're an award-winning open farm to yourself, your husband, Dennis, and all involved in Ardmore Open Farms. The best to look, you're opening this weekend. For more information, you, you can tell our listeners once again. The yeah, website. so go to ardmoreopenfarm.com or you can send us a message on our Facebook yeah. page ardmoreopenfarms.ie Bridget Cobert the best of luck for 2021 Thanks, and here's dear. to a good weekend this yeah. weekend thank you and before I go on the racing front we had a good week again for local Walford Connections Cross Channel at Sandown Park another big win for Dungarvan Jock Niall Houlihan while at Linkfield we had no less than three Walford winners with wins for Kappa Jock Tom Queeley Belly Nanine trainer Pat Phelan and Dungarvan trainer Dennis Coakley so great evening all round at Linkfield back home at Kilbegan a brilliant travel for Nakeen Butlerstown trainer Henry de Bromwell who's having a season of seasons while at Punchestown Festival fantastic win for the Flynn family Dungarvan with a brilliant grade one novice champion Chase win for their star mayor Col Reavy, who now retires to stud in Colligan. So well done to Niall and all the Flynn family. Well, on the point to point scene, at Tipperary last weekend, we'd win for Butterstown trainer and jockey Paul Power for owner Finano Driscoll, as well as a nice winner for Kinsale Bake trainer Colin Motherway at Tipperary as well. Well, that's it for this week's programs. Once again, my thanks to Ollie and Sean for all their help in putting this week's programme together. So from myself, Kieran O'Connor, stay safe. Keep up the protocol and hopefully I'll have your company again same time next week. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With glanbeaconnect.com. Thousands of products in the palm of your hand.